Hello, I'm Steve Waterworth, Technical Marketing Manager at Weaveworks. Weave GitOps is a continuous delivery platform for Kubernetes. This video follows on from the Getting Started video and covers the use case of progressive delivery, also known as canary deployments. I recommend that you watch the Getting Started video first to be familiar with Weave GitOps. Building better code faster is one of the main drivers of digital transformation. The faster your organization can release new features and fixes, the better it is for the business. If you're not doing it, your competitors are. However, speed brings risk. Canary deployments is one way to mitigate that risk. Why are they called canary deployments? Cage canaries were taken down mines as toxic gas detectors. If your canary stopped singing, it was time to get to the surface. Today, electronic gas detectors are used. We all know the best way to break software is to deploy it into production. With a canary or progressive release, new features and fixes are initially exposed to only a small percentage of requests. If it fails, then only that small percentage of requests were affected with only a small impact on the business. If it is successful, then the percentage is gradually increased until it completely replaces the previous release. The tool chain I'm using for this demo consists of Weave GitOps Core, a wrapper around Flux, Flagger, a wrapper around a service mesh, and finally Linkerd, which is the service mesh. What is a service mesh? A service mesh manages traffic between pods inside a Kubernetes cluster. A proxy is automatically injected into the pod when it starts up. All pod communication goes through these proxies, allowing them to inspect and control the traffic. The service mesh control plane communicates with the proxies to manage their configuration and gather metrics. The Getting Started video goes into detail about Weave GitOps Core. Let's just do a quick review. Weave GitOps continually reconciles the desired state, stored in Git, with the actual state, running in Kubernetes. When a change is merged into the monitored branch, those changes are immediately applied to Kubernetes. Conversely, any changes manually applied to Kubernetes are automatically reverted back to the single source of truth in Git. Configuration drift is eliminated. Now let's look at Flagger. Flagger is also part of the Flux project. Just as Weave GitOps Core is a wrapper around Flux, Flagger is a wrapper around a service mesh, making the installation, maintenance, and day-to-day -day operations easier. It also includes a load generation utility. It can query metric data from multiple sources. It integrates with various alerting tools as well as providing generic webhook integration. Now let's see how all these layers of automation come together. Like all things Kubernetes and GitOps, it's declared in a YAML file. Flagger provides a canary custom resource definition. This replaces the usual service definition that is paired with the deployment. The canary definition specifies the success criteria and how the traffic is split during rollout. This is an example of a canary definition. Like a service definition, it has a target and a port. The analysis section defines the success criteria. In this example, the data will be sampled every minute and as long as the success rate does not drop below 99% and the 99th percentile response time is not more than 250 milliseconds, more than three times, the rollout will continue. Traffic to the canary is initially 10%, increasing until it gets to 50%. After that, it's straight to 100%. Finally, the webhook integration section. As I mentioned earlier, Flagger includes a simple load generation utility. This is important because there's not enough traffic to the canary to generate metrics for analysis. It will count as a failure and the deployment will be rolled back. Notice how the load generation is targeted at the canary during rollout. An event is emitted by Flagger as each action is taken. This is being captured by the generic webhook. Let's see it all in action. I already have a Kubernetes cluster and kubectl set up. Now I will install the progressive delivery tool chain. First I will install weave gitops onto that cluster. This just takes a few seconds. The installation command is given a git repository to store its configuration. We'll use this later. Next up is Linkerd. 
First I run the check to ensure the cluster is compatible. That all looks OK. Now I'll run the actual install. Again it's a simple command that only takes a few seconds to run. Linkerd includes basic observability built on Prometheus, Grafana and their own dashboard. That's Linkerd complete. Next up is Flagger. The CRDs are created first, then Helm is used to install Flagger. Flagger includes a handy load generation utility. I'll create a namespace for this and annotate it so that Linkerd will automatically inject its proxy when the pod starts up. That's the tool chain installed and running. There are a number of pods created in different namespaces. Now I'll use GitOps to add a simple application to my Kubernetes cluster. Remember Git is the single source of truth. Therefore I point GitOps to the application configuration repository and path within. The default behavior is to create a pull request against GitOps own configuration repository. The pull request consists of a few custom resource manifests. The pull request typically goes through review and approval before being merged. Once merged, the changes will be automatically applied to the Kubernetes cluster. After a little while, the simple application is running. Looking at the pods and services, you'll notice Flagger has created additional pods and services to handle Canary deployment rollout. The Linkerd dashboard shows this in more detail. There's the primary service, which is currently receiving 100% of the traffic, and the canary with zero traffic. I'm using Lens, a handy tool for working with Kubernetes. I'll create a port forward to the external service and open up a browser. Here is the simple pod info application, currently at version 6. Back at the console, I'll clone the application configuration repository locally and change the deployment manifest to bump up the container version to 6.0.3. For the demo, I'll just merge straight into main. In a real environment, this change would be via a pull request. Back at the Linkerd dashboard, we see that a new pod with the new container version gets started and the Canary service connected to it. Traffic is progressively ramped up on the Canary service until ultimately it replaces the previous version. For the demo, this sequence has been sped up. Usually this process would take much longer. Back at the console, I'll query the events issued by the Canary as it was deployed. The progressive rollout continues as long as the analysis returns a successful result. Should the Canary fail, it will be automatically rolled back. Back to Lens to create a port forward again, opening up a browser. This time we see that pod info 603 has been successfully deployed. Thank you for watching. Visit our website to find out more about Weave GitOps and download a copy. We regularly hold hands on labs. Sign up online.